Welcome to Investing Compass. Before we begin, a quick note that the information contained in this podcast is general in nature. It does not take into consideration your personal situation, circumstances, or need. All right, so Shani, we have a competition. It's okay. early in the year. We thought it'd be a good time to have a competition. Mm-hmm. And the prize of the competition is a Morningstar hat. Mm-hmm. I actually really like the hat. I wear it every morning on my walk. Yeah, no, they're they're nice hats. Shawnee picked out the hat. Yeah. <laughs> and for anyone who saw us at some of the various conferences we've been speaking at. We had the hats there. We had the hats there. But now you can win your own, which is exciting. So anyway, the competition is the following. So if you leave us a rating and a comment on your podcast app, send that in. For the first 20 people, we'll send them a hat. And we'll give you a bonus prize if you are following us on Instagram and then you send that screenshot of your comment that you've made through our Instagram account. So you can send that through. And Shani, what's our Instagram handle? Morningstar Investor AU. Exactly. So send that through on Instagram. We'll throw in a bonus prize for the competition. And obviously send us your address as well. Yes, we do need <laughs> we do need to mail this stuff to you. And Shani and I will traipse off to the post office. Yes. All right. So Shani. Yes. We were just talking about New Year's resolutions. Yes. So we had a little bit of a I don't know, where we're Choosing a New Year's resolution for each other. <laughs> yeah. So do you want to go first and choose <laughs> no, mine? you please go first. <laughs> okay. My New Year's resolution for you, Shani, mm. is for you not to have one. Because Shani puts a lot of pressure on herself and she puts a lot of rules on herself and has all this different stuff that she's following. And I think you are great and you don't need a New Year's resolution. Just keep doing what you're doing and give yourself a little bit of slack and give yourself Some time to relax. Well, that's very nice, Mark. I'm a nice guy. (laughs) All right, it's my turn then. Yeah, let's hear this one. (laughs) This ought to be good. So, you know how there's um, life gets in the way of a lot of things. Like life gets in the way of a lot of things that we like to do. You obviously have a lot going on at work. You like to work out. You've got a lot going on in your social life. You don't really have time to pursue hobbies. Apart from drinking. <laughs> okay, so that's my hobby. So you want me to drink more? No, no. <laughs> I want you to go back uh, to something you used to do when we first met, which is you used to try a new recipe every week and you really enjoyed cooking. And that sort of just fell off because life got in the way. So I want you to try a new recipe every week. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Well, there we go. All right. So... You are supposed to do nothing, and I'm supposed to cook. (laughs) Yes. Can I eat the food? Yes. Can that be my New New Year's resolution? Yes. My New Year's resolution will be to cook food for you. Okay. Something new every week. Sounds good. So there we go. This seems to work out very well for you. (laughs) It does, hasn't it? Yes. But today, (laughs) Shawnee, we are going to talk about something that a lot of other people probably have New Year's resolutions to do, and that is to start investing or to simplify their investments. And so today we're going to talk about building a portfolio with three ETFs. But in typical Investing Compass fashion, we aren't just going to tell you the three ETFs and end the podcast. We're going to spend some time explaining some concepts that can hopefully allow you to understand a bit about putting together this simple portfolio. Let's start with a simple question. Why three? Well, we're trying to be simple here, right? And we're looking for a portfolio that anyone can put together. So even if you aren't that interested in investing and want a set and forget approach, or perhaps if you're going for a core and satellite approach and want to use this for the core portion of your portfolio, it should be pretty easy. Maybe we should pause and quickly explain what core and satellite is. It's an approach designed to minimize taxes and fees by investing in index funds in a core portion of your portfolio and then allowing you the opportunity to outperform the market using a small portion of your portfolio to pick specific investments, and that is satellite. Okay, exactly. Yeah, so this three ETF portfolio would represent the core in that scenario. But there's another reason that we choose three, and that is because what is advised by Bogleheads, and they are the followers of Vanguard's famous founder, John Bogle, and his investment philosophy. So Bogleheads, of course, comes from Parrotheads. 
So in my weekly attempt to illustrate our age difference, my <laughs> question to you, Shani, is do you know what a parrot head is? No. And my fear of birds is really kicking in here. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. They're not real birds. Okay. Do you know who Jimmy Buffett is? No. You don't even know who Jimmy Buffett is? No. You've never heard of Jimmy Buffett? Warren Buffett's brother? No. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, geez. All right. So Jimmy Buffett is a singer that's been around for a very long time, mm -hmm. and he is quite old right now, but Jimmy Buffett has this huge following. So Jimmy Buffett sings about, you know, relaxing, go, no, going to the islands and drinking and blowing off responsibility. And so he has this really dedicated following and they go to his concerts. And I've been to a number of Jimmy Buffett concerts okay. and I really enjoy it. <laughs> Are you but a parrot head? I, I, I don't think I'm an official parrot head, okay. but you go and you dress <laughs> up in colorful island gear and go to these concerts and drink a lot and have a good time. But, you know, these parrot heads that he has, they're dedicated to having fun and living life to their fullest. And they sort of promote this hedonism, which is the exact opposite of passive investing with a three ETF portfolio. But investing, unlike a Jimmy Buffett concert, is not supposed to be exciting. It's supposed to get the job done. So I think that that contrast is just fine. So why are they called parrot heads? Is um, it because there's parrots on islands or? Yeah, I mean, I think the whole colorful, because they dress very colorfully. Parrots are very colorful. Parrots have this sort of tropical connotation. Um, but I guess I'm not 100% sure. Okay. All right. Well, that's the origin story of the three ETF portfolio and another tangent. Okay. A useless <laughs> tangent or not a bad one? <laughs> we just took a tour no. to Margaritaville, Shani. Okay. That's now a that song. <laughs> that is a song, his most famous song. Right. Um, well, now that we've returned from Margaritaville, let's talk a bit more about why we are looking at three ETFs. Well, each of these ETFs, of course, represents a different exposure we want to get in our portfolio. So we're going to do a domestic share ETF, an international share ETF, and then a fixed interest ETF. So we are missing some things here, Shani, like specific allocations to real estate and infrastructure. So what's going on with all of that? Well, if we're selecting wide market indexes, then we will have exposure to at least a portion of those asset classes. But Bogle really believed in simplicity. He believed that the more straightforward your portfolio, the less time you would spend worrying about it, and the less likely you would be to change things when the market is down or up significantly. So basically, that means that the simplified portfolio would reduce behavioral risk or the risk of you doing something stupid, which I've done multiple times at Jimmy Buffett concerts. <laughs> and as investors, we do stupid things when emotions take over. So yeah, what do you think about all that, Shani? Well, there are countless studies that show the benefit of adding some bigger exposure to real estate and infrastructure in your portfolio, but I do agree that none of those benefits hold up in comparison to the negative impact of doing something stupid like selling at the bottom of the market or going all in at the top. So if you're skittish about investing and thinking you are prone to making these mistakes, perhaps simplicity is the name of the game. And that is what this portfolio is all about, simplicity and set and forget. So the other big advantage of using a three ETF portfolio is that it can reduce your transaction costs, which can be a problem with ETFs. But interestingly enough, if you actually listen to Bogle, you would be invested in funds and not ETFs. And funds, of course, are something that you are into, Shani. Well, when I first started working, I liked funds because there were no transaction costs, which really helps because I was investing uh, small amounts of money. And I do still think that it's a good option for people just starting out to explore. But we're living in a world where it's kind of hard to get anyone to consider anything other than an ETF. So I guess that's what we're going with. Exactly. Exactly. So let's start with the three ETFs. And then we can talk about how much you should allocate to each of them. So when you're only going to hold three ETFs, you will want them to be as broad as possible and as representative as possible of the entire investable universe. So why don't you explain this concept for us, Shani? Well, Bogle has a pretty famous quote that basically says, stop trying to find a needle in the haystack and just own the haystack. 
And owning the entire universe of shares means that you're taking part in the growth of the economy as represented by publicly traded businesses. So this would be exposure to overall economic growth and the portion of that growth that publicly traded companies are able to extract in profits. And over time, this has been a very good thing with corporate profits taking an ever bigger part of the economic pie. So with that in mind, we're going to pick three ETFs that are available in Australia that represent, as I said before, global shares, domestic shares, and fixed interest. So Shani, start us out with global shares. And we're going to pick the Vanguard Miski International ETF with the ticker symbol of VGS. Yeah, you know, we really need to work on our sound effects for this show, don't you Don't you think? Like, will a drum roll, is that too much to ask <laughs> before Shani announces something like an ETF pick? But anyway, something to work on maybe for 2024. We don't want to be too ambitious with our goals, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, so why VGS, Shani? Well, obviously, we aren't pulling things out of a hat here. We're relying on our team of analysts that cover ETFs, and this is their preferred choice for core global equity exposure. They cite how cheap the fees are, the liquidity or the ease with which you can move into and out of the ETF, the diversification and the track record that Vanguard has of being able to match the index returns. That is what earned it a silver rating from our analysts. So let's talk about what's in this ETF. So it includes shares from 22 developed market countries, and there's over 1,400 large and mid cap companies in this ETF. So large cap, of course, refers to the biggest companies in these 22 developed markets, and mid cap refers to medium-sized companies. And it is worth talking about what is in this ETF and what isn't. Many people will immediately react to two things. The fact that it excludes emerging market countries like China or India and that while it is allocated to 22 countries, over 70% of it is in the US. So how should we think about this? Well, you know what, Shani? It is what it is. So we're doing something simplistic here and following an index that is heavily weighted to the US because when we look at the overall market, US companies make up a huge portion of the publicly traded equities we are getting exposure to by taking a passive strategy. Now, many of these giant US companies that are represented in this index are global, meaning they sell their products all around the world, which gives you more of an indication of the exposures you get rather than simply focusing on the country they're from. And in terms of exposure to countries like China and India, we need to remember that depending upon the country, the share market can be more or less representative of the overall economy. And in the US, the share market is very representative of the overall economic activity of the country. In China, that isn't the case so much as there are more private companies and more government control. So when we look at the U.S. and Chinese share markets, we can see that the U.S. is more than four times the size of China's share market, even though the economies are closer in size. And once again, there are lots of cases to be made to have emerging market exposure in your portfolio. There are cases to be made to tilt your portfolio away from the U.S. given the run the market was on and the valuation levels. But we're going for simplicity here. And the thesis is that for a lot of people, the benefits of simplicity will outweigh the benefits of diversifying more widely. And the simplicity of this ETF is backed up with really low costs. The fee is incredibly low at only 0.18%. And because of how much this is traded, the liquidity that we referenced previously, the buy-sell spread is the lowest amongst diversified global equity ETFs in Australia. And this is an underappreciated cost of trading and will make a difference if you're frequently buying this ETF as you make more contributions into your portfolio. Morningstar Investor is built for investors by investors. It provides independent research and data on over 40,000 securities, tools to build and maintain an investment portfolio, and investor education resources to support you, regardless of where you are in your investing journey. Explore opportunities with our monthly global best ideas. Explore our ETF model portfolios. Plan better with two years of dividend forecasts for ASX listed stocks. And stay informed with independent thought leadership. We've built tools to help you construct, monitor, and maintain your portfolio, including our Portfolio Manager, integrated with one of Australia's leading portfolio tracking tools, ShareSite. Morningstar has been empowering investor success for over 35 years. We're passionate about your outcomes and are here every step of the way as you achieve them. Take out a free four-week trial to access our resources. Find the details in the episode notes. All right, so we're going to move on. We're going to pivot to our next ETF. So if we were speaking directly to American investors, I would make an argument that maybe for the equity portion of your portfolio, 
this is enough, that an ETF covering developed markets is all you need in your portfolio. But things are a little different when we're speaking to Australian investors. That's right, Mark. As a U.S. investor, you would have a good deal of exposure to your home country because 70% of the ETF is made up of U.S. companies. But that isn't the case in Australia. This particular ETF removes Australia from the index. But even if that didn't happen, Australia would be only a fraction of the allocation since the Australian share market is so small compared to large global markets. And as Australians, you wouldn't want only 2% or so of your portfolio to be allocated to the local market. That just doesn't make sense. Now, many Australians are too overweight Aussie shares as they exhibit the same home bias we see all over the world. But that is too far in the opposite direction. So we need an Aussie ETF. What are we looking at here, Shani? Well, there are two primary passive market cap weighted ETFs that cover the Australian market. There is Vanguard Australian Shares with the ticker symbol of VAS, and there is a Spider S&P ASX 200 ETF with the ticker symbol of STW. Now, these two ETFs are slightly different. STW tracks the ASX 200, which is the 200 largest companies by market cap in Australia. VAS tracks the ASX 300, which is the 300 largest companies by market cap in Australia. And on the surface, these seem very different. So after all, VAS has 100 more holdings. Some people might think that this is much better because it's really diversified. Some people might think that it's bad because they want something more concentrated. But many regular listeners to Investing Compass probably know exactly what I'm going to say. Tracking the ASX 200 versus 300 makes no real difference. And that is because they're both market cap weighted indexes, which means the more of, that more of the ETF gets allocated to the largest shares. That means very little is allocated to the smallest part of the index. So in this case, the 100 smallest companies in the ASX 300 have a total of 2.7% of the overall index allocation. That is very little and realistically isn't going to make much of a difference. None of those 100 companies have more than half a percent of the overall index allocated to them. And the reason that so little is allocated to these bottom 100 holdings of the ASX 300 is that the index is very top-heavy. starts at the top with BHP, making up 9.85% of the ASX 200 index, and 9.65% of the ASX 300 index. So once again, little difference between the two. And the top-heavy nature of these indexes extends beyond that top holding. In both the ASX 200 and 300, the top 10 holdings make up 47% of the total index. So we don't have any sort of real difference in the exposures you get as an investor between these two ETFs. So let's look at some other factors. The big one for passive ETFs is the price or the fee that you're paying for them. VAS comes in at 0.1% and STW is 0.13%. That is not a very big difference. And when our analysts look at the two ETFs, they give them the same ranking, a bronze medalist rating. So Mark, which one of these are we going to pick as a second ETF in our three ETF portfolio? Well, Shani, imagine a drum roll here. Okay. (laughs) The winner is neither of them. So the actual winner is the VanEck Australian Equal Weight ETF with the ticker symbol MVW. The suspense and hot twists on investing compass are really getting out of control, Mark. Yeah, they they really are. So can you just imagine people listening just perched at the edge of their seats? Like a parrot. Like a parrot perched on a branch, (laughs) exactly. So maybe to shake things up for our third ETF, we'll pick a crypto ETF or perhaps a thematic ETF that's tracking companies that start with the letter F. Or maybe not, but people will just have to stay tuned for that last ETF. In the meantime, let's talk about this Vanek Equal Weighted ETF. The reason we've selected this ETF is based on the unique attributes of the Australian market. We talked a lot about the concentration in the top 10 holdings, and particularly in BHP, which makes up close to 10% of the index. That only tells part of the story. The Australian market is really narrow, which means that a handful of sectors and industries dominate, including financial services and mining. And we think in this situation, you aren't really getting adequate diversification with those market cap weighted indexes. That's why we really like the equal weighted ETF from Van Eck. Now, we talked earlier about how a market cap weighted index and the ETFs that track it allocate more of their portfolio to the biggest companies, hence that close to 10% that goes into BHP. An equal weighted ETF allocates an equal amount to each company. In this case, MVW has 86 holdings. And those 86 holdings represent large and mid-cap shares in Australia. Those are the biggest companies and the medium-sized companies that are in the ASX 200 and ASX 300. 
Now, as we said, our analysts really like this ETF and think it's a great way to get exposure to the Australian market because it's more diversified. So why don't you walk through the implications of this equal weighting, Mark? So let's start with the size of the companies you get exposure to. A market cap weighted index like ASX 200 or 300 allocates more to the biggest companies. In a market like Australia that is top heavy, that means that a disproportionate amount goes to them. The average market cap of the equal weighted ETF portfolio is less than half that of the market cap weighted products. That gives you more exposure to medium-sized companies, and that diversifies the overall portfolio since so many of the biggest companies in Australia are banks and miners. That's right, Mark. The exposure to the financial sector drops around 8% from over 28% for VAS to 19% in MVW. And while the allocation to miners is around the same, you are getting more exposure to some smaller miners rather than just the bigger ones in the industry where half your basic materials allocation is to BHP. And the fee is still reasonable at 0.35%, although it's important to note that it is well higher than the 0.10% for VAS. The other thing to look at is the way that it's rebalanced. It happens on a quarterly basis, which means that the best performing shares are that make up more than their allotment in the portfolio are sold, and the ones that didn't perform as well are bought. That can have tax consequences because there are likely going to be capital gains involved, something to consider for investors. But overall, we give this ETF a silver rating, which makes it the top-ranked ETF for domestic equities in Australia, as it eliminates a lot of the concentration risk inherent in the Australian market. Okay, so we're on our last ETF, Shani, which means we are coming to the end of our three ETF portfolio journey, much like you tell people, I'm coming to the end of my life journey. (laughs) So we've checked two boxes here. We've had global shares and local shares. And now we need something that's going to lower the volatility a bit in these portfolios. And that means bonds. Now, once we go through this ETF, we're going to talk a little bit about asset allocation. And there may be some people that decide not to invest in bonds. And we completely get that. But for those that do, we have the iShares Core Composite Bond ETF with the ticker symbol of IAF. That is our choice for getting exposure to the Aussie fixed income market. That's right, Mark. And it's cheap at 0.15% and has low tracking error, so you're getting the index return. And that index in this case is the Bloomberg Ausbond Composite Index. This index is mostly government bonds, but it also has exposure to some corporate bonds. And as a fixed interest ETF, we want to look at a couple different things. First is the running yield, which is the annual coupon payment of the bonds in the portfolio divided by their current price. So of course change over time, but it's a snapshot of the interest payments you'll receive. Right now, it is at 2.86%. The other figure we want to look at is the duration, which represents interest rate risk. The duration is 5.28 right now. And that means that if interest rates go up by 1%, the price of IAF would fall by 5.28%. If interest rates go down by 1%, the ETF should go up by 5.28%. That is, of course, because bond prices move inversely to interest rates. Let's shift to asset allocation. We want this portfolio to be simple and a way to get started for investors. Simple and hopefully something you can set it and forget. There are things missing from this portfolio that more sophisticated investors may consider, but we think this is a good place to start. And for many investors that have really long time horizons, this may be a two ETF portfolio with a bit of cash. As you approach your goal, you're going to want to remove volatility from your portfolio and increase the amount you allocate to IAF. You have a very, very short time frame. The majority of your portfolio may be in cash or IAF. And then in terms of allocation between global and domestic equities, we believe that most Australians are probably overly exposed to Australian equities. The Australian market is very cyclical and very concentrated in certain industries. We've tried to address that with an equal weighted ETF, but you still have a tiny exposure to technology at less than 2%. You still have 57% of the portfolio in the most cyclical industries, including financial services and basic materials. Many local companies are also very locally focused and get a good portion of their revenue from Australia when compared to other markets, headlined by the domestically focused big four banks. So as is reflected in our asset allocation models, we think investors should consider having more of an allocation to global shares than direct than domestic shares. A 60-40 split within the equity portion of that portfolio is what we believe is appropriate for most investors. And we understand that is going to come as a bit of a shock for many investors. The familiarity with local companies is a draw. Franking credits are a draw. 
but we still think that many investors need to think more about the advantages of investing globally. All right. So there we have it, Shani, a simple three ETF portfolio that is low cost and low maintenance and includes the buckets that you want to get exposure to. So we also had lots of things today. This low maintenance portfolio, Mm -hmm. we had New Year's resolutions, we had a competition, Mm -hmm. which we would encourage you once again to enter, and Shawnee learned about Jimmy Buffett. So for the rest of the day, we are going to be listening to Jimmy Buffett at Investing Compass headquarters, and Shawnee can tell you how terrible she thinks he is (laughs) during our next episode. But anyway, thank you very much for joining. And please, we would love to have you enter that competition so you get a hat and a special bonus if you send us your comments and ratings on Instagram. Any advice in this podcast is general advice or regulated financial advice under New Zealand law prepared by Morningstar Australasia Proprietary Limited and or Morningstar Research Limited without reference to your financial objectives, situations or needs. You should consider the advice in light of these matters and any relevant product disclosure statement before making any decision to invest. To obtain advice for your own situation, contact a financial advisor.